Hello everyone, Hyper here, and in today's video we will be ranking all the ranged DPS specs for Castle Natria. So I did a video for melee already and healers, if you want to check those out. Um, I tried to rank these, can, taking as many factors into consideration as possible, such as their damage, their utility, how good their rework has been going from BFA to Shadowlands, um, how much are they impacted by some of the borrowed power that they're losing going from Shadowlands or from BFA to Shadowlands and so on. Um, within the tiers, I didn't rank these in any particular order. So if there's multiple specs within a tier, it doesn't mean that the one I mentioned first is nece necessarily better than the rest. Before we get started though, I did want to shout out my patrons who make it possible for me to record videos like this. Um, huge thank you, and if you'd like to join my Patreon and get a bunch of cool rewards and perks, you can find the link to it in the description box. So let's just jump into it with the S tier. So the first spec here is the Shadow Priest. Priest, and Shadow in particular, has probably seen the most changes out of any of the specs in the game. Their entire toolkit, from talents, base abilities, just their core functionality, has been reworked two or three times um, and on top of that they got numerous iterations and small changes and Shadow Priest might be one of the specs that Blizzard absolutely nailed going into Shadowlands. Their weaknesses have been pretty much eliminated from the game. They're extremely strong still on single target um, which is typically kind of where Shadow Priest fell behind just because they were so good at like multi-dotting. So their single target is good, um, they're still extremely good at multi-dotting, they also improved their AoE by adding uh, essentially an ignite mechanic to their dot, allowing you to deal pretty insane amounts of AoE damage, um, I'm sure you've seen them either in Mythic Plus or in Raiding, but Shadow Priest is looking like an absolute beast currently, they still have Disperse, they still have V, they can still spot shield targets when needed, um, overall the spec and the changes that were made to this spec have just been absolutely insane. And I do assume that they will get a numbers tuning before we move into Natria. But even with that, just the toolkit allows them to be probably one of the most competitive ranged DPS. The second spec in the S tier is the Affliction Warlock. So after recent changes, the Affliction Warlock lost a lot of its damage. But their toolkit and their damage profile still remains the same. They're really good on single target and really good on spread um, multi-dotting, which there's quite a bit of uh, in this raid, especially towards the last boss, which very often we see raid comps made around what's going to be good on the last boss. So having the ability to multi-dot targets that are away from the boss itself is extremely useful. Um, Affliction Warlock has also had its ramp time significantly reduced, um, so you no longer take forever to start dealing any damage. Their AoE has been improved with the addition of Malefic Rapture, so their AoE burst and burst in general has been improved. And those were kind of the two areas where Affliction was really struggling in, in the past. So with those essentially improved, um, Affliction has taken a place in the S tier. And they still bring really good survivability because they're a Warlock. Um, and the Warlock Gate, which can be very, very useful in multiple fights, but that's not exclusive to Affliction Warlock uh, since all three of the specs have it. Moving now to the A tier, first up we have the MM Hunter, the Marksmanship Hunter. So MM Hunter still does really good single target damage and very good burst AoE. Kind of an area where they struggle a little bit is spread AoE or spread cleaving, um, so that's why they're not in the S tier. Their damage is still really good, even though the legendaries that made MM Hunters so insane, they get toned down a little bit. But even with that, MM Hunters are still definitely one of the more competitive ranged DPS when it comes to damage. And on top of that, they still bring Turtle, so their utility is not to be looked over because Turtle has seen pretty good use in most of the raids where MM Hunter was competitive. Then we have the Frost Mage. So the Frost Mage excels at a few things now. It has pretty good single target damage and it has really good damage 
when you have a bunch of ads spawn around the boss and you can funnel the frozen orb and your um, Iceland's procs into the boss. So Frost Mage went from kind of doing sustained um, AoE or like sustained single target to being a lot burstier than it was. And it's priority damage if you're able to actually funnel with ads around the boss, it is absolutely incredible. So on boss encounters where you have priority ads, for example, or the boss just randomly spawns ads that are not very high priority, you have really good damage in the targets that you want to hit. So your AoE damage will also be really good, but just being able to funnel damage is extremely important. The one drawback of uh, Frost Mage is that it doesn't really perform on cleave when it's spread cleave. So if the targets are away from the boss, you're not getting extra procs from your frozen orb. You don't really have any dots that you put up. So you're pretty much just doing single target damage and you're ignoring the ads that spawn, you know, 20, 30 yards away from the boss. That is the big downside of it. But luckily in Natria, um, there's few situations, um, most specifically towards the end of the raid where that's the case. And and classes like Shadow Priest and Affliction Warlocks should be able to take care of it while mages do, just do what they're good at. So moving on to the third spec here, we have the Destruction Warlock. Destruction Warlock, again, took a pretty big hit with the Covenant nerf recently, but its AoE damage is still absolutely incredible. Um, its single target is okay. Its two target cleave with Havoc is really good. And especially that we have a lot of legendaries that you can kind of play into to increase your two target cleave damage. Destruction Warlock, depending on tuning, um, how it goes between Affliction and Destruction when it comes to Heroic Week, we'll see which one is going to end up being in the top tier. With the improvements they made to their AoE damage, which was one part where Destruction absolutely struggled with in the past, uh, while they had really good single target, really good cleave, on AoE damage, Destruction Warlocks were on the struggle bus. Um, so since they fixed that with the new Conduit, Legendary, and Talent interactions, which I talk about in my Destruction Warlock video, um, again, it's a ranged spec that had its weakness essentially buffed and fixed going to Shadowlands, so it should be really strong. So moving down to the B tier, first spec here is the Balance Druid. So while initially looking really strong, Balance Druid has unfortunately uh, been getting hit with nerf after nerf. So they still have pretty good strong AoE. Starfall is actually good now. Um, they might be very strong on specific fights. So that's why I put them in the B tier. Classes like Balance Druid have niches that they actually fill pretty well. Um, so strong, big AoE fights, uh, Balance Druid might be really strong. Fights where you need burst damage, Balance Druid might be pretty strong. Outside of that, they still bring Stamp Rower, they still bring Innervate. So while you might not stack Balance Druids necessarily, seeing one or two of in a raid probably won't be too surprising. Then we have the Beast Mastery Hunter. So BM Hunter has lost a lot going from um, the last tier of BFA into the first tier of Shadowlands. With a lot of the stats and the very high crit that they had gone, BM Hunter plays a little bit differently now so most of the rotation and everything got kind of slowed down a little bit so you're a lot more focused on just maintaining your buffs they struggle on spread cleave which they have always done in the past and that's the case with a few of the range dps in general and range dps that struggle on spread cleave which is typically the role that they fulfill within a raid because Melee DPS are always bad at that, so you need the range to take that job. Uh, typically, don't make it to the top tiers of uh, Mythic Raiding, unless they have insane single target damage or fill a different niche in the raid. A big reason why I put BM Hunter down in the B tier is just because their damage lags behind MM Hunter. Um, and that could be something that gets changed with tuning, since both MM and BM have a lot of the same strengths and weaknesses when it comes to your damage profile um a big determining factor will just be which one does more damage and also a big upside of the bm hunter that mm doesn't have is just the movement 
um, in Mythic Raiding and even in Mythic Plus. We see BM Hunters used whenever there's a ton of movement on a fight. Then we have the Elemental Shaman. So Elemental Shaman also got a pretty major rework. Um, they have a lot better cleave. They still have good funnel damage. Big downside of the Elemental Shaman is their survivability. They don't have an immunity and they're not as tanky as the other ranged specs. So much like Hunters, outside of their turtle, Elemental Shaman just doesn't really have tools to survive damage. Maybe some of their defensives get buffed, they could be quite good. And similar to Balanced Druids, they fulfill a niche within the raid. So on encounters where you can funnel damage, like Sun King for example, they might be really strong. But in general, I think that while you might bring one of them, it's probably not going to be a class that you want to stack in your raid. On their utility front, they still bring Windrush Totem, which is really strong for your melee DPS um, and your range to an extent. Um, and they have Ankh. So in previous raids, there have been quite a few fights where Ankh can just break mechanics. And sacrificing players um, is actually part of your strategy. And if that's the case, Elemental Shamans are really good because you don't have to waste a B res um, on a pool where you're close to killing the boss and you just need to sacrifice a player to mechanic. Then they can just onk and keep doing damage. And lastly, in the B tier, we have the Arcane Mage. Much like the Unholy DK, for melee DPS, the Arcane Mage is good at two things pure single target and large AoE. So their single target damage is really strong, maybe even better than Frost Mages, but it's very bursty. So while they do give you a large benefit, um, they might see play on bosses where you have a very limited time window to do a ton of damage. In Uldir, if you remember, we saw Arcane Mages be really good on Fetid Devourer, where you only had 90 seconds, if I remember correctly, or 60 seconds um, to take care of a specific add. And in those situations, Arcane Mage actually excels. They had a lot of the issues with the spec actually fixed, um, most notably their GCD problem. Uh, a lot of the abilities have been either taken off the GCD or merged together. So Arcane Power and Rune of Power, for example. So your setup time got significantly reduced, but you still have the strengths that Arcane had in the past. And then moving down to the C tier, I put two specs here. The first one being the Fire Mage. So the new Ignite rework is absolutely garbage. Um, Fire Mages also require a pretty high amount of gear to be really good at what they do. Towards the end of the BFA um, tier, we saw Fire Mages be absolutely insane, super dominant spec. That was because of a few reasons. They had a super high level of mastery and fights were designed really well to make use of Ignite. So with Ignite being manually spread now, and also the fights in Castle Nathria don't really seem to be all that Ignite favorable, um, Fire Mage will most likely be out of favor. On top of that, with the secondary stat scaling um, issue that they, that they introduced, where you get diminishing returns if you try to stack a single secondary stat, Fire Mage is again taking another hit because on fire you pretty much just one mastery. Um, that's what made Fire Mage so strong. You had insanely high amounts of mastery, making your Ignite deal a ton of damage. So now that you kind of have to spread out which secondary stats you go for, uh, have a balance of all of them, your Ignite will be a lot weaker and you have to manually spread it. Um, and you just don't have the gear levels that are necessarily needed for Fire Mage to excel. So early on, especially in the first tier, I don't see Fire Mage as being good. And the last spec that we have is the Demonology Warlock. So Demonology might have an argument to be placed in a higher tier than C tier, but I see a few issues with the spec that just make it very unlikely that it's going to see much use during mythic progression. So their damage is alright, their single target is okay, they have pretty decent cleave damage if the targets are stacked around your main target. Their big issue comes from 
their damage profile again. Uh, they don't have any multi-dotting pretty much, so they're either dealing damage to their primary target or targets that spawn around the primary target. And even at that, some of the other specs just do it much better than they do. So when you have a Frost Mage, for example, doing essentially the exact same thing, but, you know, 10, 15 times better, um, those are just random numbers. There's no reason to bring a Demo Lock. So also with the loss of secondary stats through corruption, Demo Locks don't have the haste necessary to make it play well so their setup time is pretty long and some of the changes that they made to demo lock moving into shadowlands have not necessarily improved the way it plays early on in the expansion so much like fire mage if you don't have the gear on demo lock it's probably not going to play too well um and that is a little worrying for the first tier of any expansion because specs that rely heavily on secondary stats uh, generally don't do too well at the beginning since you're in the first tier, your item level is the lowest it's going to be in the entire expansion, but your secondary stats are the lowest they will be in the entire expansion. For those reasons, I just don't see Demo Lock being used too much, especially when you have such strong options with the other two specs in Affliction and Destruction. So we'll see how that pans out. Let me know in the comment section below what do you think about this list? Is there any spec that you would place higher or lower on this list? And if so, please tell me why. Thank you so much for watching this video. And if you enjoyed it, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.